I'll read another one. This is the official Andy book to the Marvel Universe. Update 89, issue 5. Ron French cover. And this is a full wraparound. All the characters. It's worrying when Aunt Tomei is your biggest pull. You all already know... I will be mentioning that the cover originally featured Miss Magnets and that she was to have a profile, but it was scrapped because it was already outdated. And so they replaced her on the cover with an awful character from an appalling Spider-Man annual. Here are our credits and our contents. And here is our first profile for the paraders. We sneak in some Miss Magnets this way. Now, just to clarify, Miss Magnets' cover appearance wasn't to represent the paraders. That is why Sabre Claw was on the cover. Miss Magnets was meant to have her own profile. And we even have seen the artwork done for it. It ran in an issue of Marvel Age. And it is my favourite piece of anti-book art ever produced. So we have an anti-book here for the various Marvel characters that either hadn't received profiles before or they needed updates. Included in that are new characters as well as old characters that needed updating. There is my daddy, Dad of Nimrod. I have been thinking about changing my name to Son of Cap Wolf, but I won't. I realise there are several videos where I say my name is Son of Nimrod and that would just be confusing. But yeah, I started to not like the association with Nimrod because of the current comics. Nimrod is not fun and borderline boring in the current comics. And he is like the big bad. And the last thing I want is someone thinking I have named myself after that version of the character. I already have to juggle with the fact I am using a Christopher Clairvoyant character as an avatar. My name, of course, is a reference to the Pixies song Nimrod's Son. <laughs> Morgan from Excalibur, I thought of someone else. Before this, with the exception of Captain Britain, I don't think any of the characters, and I suppose Fetish Fuel as well actually, I don't think any of the characters that originated in the Marvel UK comics were profiled. The furry didn't have a profile. I don't think Mad Jim Jasper's had one. Many of Captain Britain's rogues didn't. A lot of the stuff that is profiled in this update is seemingly only being profiled because they are now being used in American comics, namely Excalibur as opposed to the British publications being considered part of the canon. And it still only lists first American appearance. And you know that irritates me a lot. This one goes out to my subscriber Robin. He told me privately that this is his all-time favourite Marvel character in the world. Now... I don't often do this, but poor Robin is dying of leukemia and also AIDS. And the only thing he has ever wanted to see 
is his hero, Dr. Droom, from the Avengers, locked in combat with his all-time favourite Marvel character, Mr. Jip. If you can help this dying boy's dream be fulfilled, please write in to Son of Nimrod HQ as soon as possible, because all the cancer and all the tumours and the gout, it will kill Robin faster than you think. Sinestro! Something interesting about these updates is we get a lot of art by the regular artist of whatever titles the characters come from. It was always the case, but it really seems prevalent in these. Maybe it is because we are getting less characters without a specific designated arm. And so we have loads of excellent main characters and loads of Iron Man characters. And so they are all drawn by the regular artists of those titles. We have some insight here into where Amazing Spider-Man's art direction is going. And I can't say I am ever happy to see Brie Larson's granddad draw stuff. The member of the Masters of Evil in Under Siege that Crusher Man went to pick up from the airport in an issue of Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man 283. Then they fled and never joined the team. That is the canon. He was who was at the airport. It was him. Not Dead Knight like the deluxe edition suggested. Controversy in the Marvel offices was that in the original and the sequel... Marky Mark had left out Devil Dinosaur and Moon Boy. Well, controversy no more. Maybe that's the reason that Marky Mark didn't do this one. We get a lot of helpings from SeaWorld Attacks in this update. There's some good primers for that crossover. You won't like the crossover, but you might end up like me, where... You think you'll want a lighter crossover, or you try to imagine it being better. Some stuff just reminds me of the current Excellent Men books, and it brings me down. It brings me far too down. I usually want to engage in discussion about things, but talking about the Jonathan Huckleberry Plant People Excellent Men comics, it brings me too low. I mean, this is a character that looks like an egg. And all it does is remind me of that redneck comic that featured it. Even the two supplied pictures can't agree if this character is red or green. Froggy from Dairy Devil. I've said we get a lot of civilian supporting characters in this update. I think Peter Sanford and Son decided that it wasn't proper to not give the significant ones their own profiles. Originally, the Andy books, well, very originally, the index at the back of Conquest of Champagne, that was just an index of the superheroes, the ones with powers or the ones with superhero identities. No villains, no temporary powered people, no Dickie Jones. By the deluxe edition, we were getting Henry Guy Ritchie and Dickie Jones. And in the Book of the Dead, there were plenty of dead civilians, like Uncle Ben. So now we get Kate Neville. Remember her? Kate Neville? No? Kate Neville? From comics? Do you remember her? Kate Neville, neat shift, nice profile for them, most of them originating from Spider-Girl comics. Dakota Johnson, stylish and cool, and she loves limes. Why was Brie Larson's granddad doing so much Spider-Man art in this? I don't think he had taken over yet. I know he did that filling issue, the Sabre Claw one. Well, that was like summer 1989. 
And this would have been September. And it was worked on for a long time. I don't think he took over Amazing Spider-Man until a few months after this came out. He must have known well in advance that he would be the ongoing artist after Todd McFarland left. Deborah Ann Wall. The only notable thing about this character is the Otty who plays her. Aunt Marissa Tomei. Don't forget your wheat cakes, dearie. Does this really need an update? The French entrant from The Conquest of Champagne. He got a profile in the first series, but my god, not much had been done with him since then. There used to be a guy who watched all my videos and was obsessed with Cara Tennant here. Based on this picture, I understand why. Especially when it is next to another random SHI ELD agent that nobody has heard of. You know, when you cut Miss Magnets because the profile is technically out of date, but you run with such meagre characters as this, it can only be disappointing for a reader. I think people buying the Andy books understand that things are subject to change and immediately become no longer reflective of what is happening. I don't think there is any reason that you couldn't run a completed profile for Miss Magnets and either add a sentence to the end or let people accept that stuff obviously has happened in the interim. Wonder Woman Sexy one to end on. I think my favourite character from Marky Mark's Justice League. But ask me again later. I might say Zatanna. Or another woman. Vixen. Vixen was kind of hot. The one that was meant to be Vixen. She was kind of hot. That was today's video. Hopefully. Actually she wasn't like Vixen at all. They were both just stylish black women on the Justice League. Hopefully, with a covers video tomorrow and the weekend, I should be able to catch up again. I wound up losing a day with that unreleased Excellent Men review, and I've been left in a lurch because it meant I wouldn't have much time between recording and release. I'll give this... Seven updated thumbs up.